So in the previous lesson, we talked about the fact that something is oxidized and something is reduced. And when something is oxidized, something else must be reduced. And when something is reduced, something else must be oxidized. That's because oxidation is loss of electrons, reduction is gain of electrons, oil rig. Oxidation, loss of electrons, reduction is gain of electrons. So something in there is losing electrons. Oxidation is loss. It's being oxidized and losing electrons. Where do they go? They've got to go somewhere. They go to something that's being reduced. Reduction is gain of electrons. So something gets oxidized, loses electrons. They get picked up by something else that's reduced and gains those electrons. We call that redox. Reduction and oxidation. Redox. So we know that when there's oxidation, there's reduction. Okay. What we can do is we can split an equation up into two halves. One half where something is oxidized, and we can split it up into the other half where the other thing is reduced. We then put them together like two halves of a sandwich, and it becomes whole. And that then has oxidation and reduction together. So we split the oxidation bit and the reduction bit into two halves called a half equation. And then we put the oxidation half and the reduction half back together again. And it becomes a whole equation. OK, let's have a look at that. And let's also discuss in a minute why on earth we do that. Why bother? So. One half an equation shows something being reduced, and the other half of the equation shows it being oxidized. The half equations have got to balance, okay? And they've got to balance just, not just in terms of the atoms, they've got to balance in terms of the charges. So how on earth, the atoms should be quite easy to balance just in the normal way, but how do we balance them in terms of charges, pluses and minuses? Well, that's where we add in electrons. And we add in electrons as E minuses. An E minus with a small e is an electron and it's got a minus charge. And we can put that onto one side or the other to make the charges balance. So let me have a look at the first one here. So let's balance it first of all in terms of the atoms, the V's, the O's, the H's and things like that. OK. So let's have a look. One V, one V. The V's balance. Three O's. The O's don't balance. So I'm going to need a three on this side to balance the O's. Now I've got six H's on this side. So I'm going to need six H's on this side. OK. Now I've balanced the V's, the O's and the H's. I now need to balance the plus and minus charges. So let's head up on the left hand side how many pluses and minuses we've got. VO3, one minus. That's just one minus. The three doesn't mean three minuses. The three is for the O's. So VO3 minuses means it's got a V, three O's and a minus charge. Six H pluses, that's six plus because there's six lots of H1 plus. So I've got one minus, six plus. On the left hand side, I've got five pluses overall. On the right hand side, I've got three pluses overall. So on the left, there's five pluses. On the right, there's three pluses. I can add electrons in. Well, I'm going to add them to the left. And you'll see why in a minute. Because I want to lower the number of plus charges on the left. I've got one minus and six pluses is five plus on this side. And I've only got three plus on this side. So if I had electrons to the left and I had two electrons to the left, I've now got three pluses on both sides. One minus, six plus, two minuses is one minus, two minuses, three minuses, six pluses is three plus on this side to balance the three plus on that side. 
see if you can balance the others in terms of plus and minus charges and also in terms of the atoms.